I'm Kim McIntosh and I teach biology at Shadow Mountain High School and this lecture is on the topic of the chemistry of life. So we're going to start with atoms because all matter is made of atoms. An atom is the smallest unit of matter. The nucleus of an atom is made of neutrons and they don't have any charge at all and there's protons in that nucleus as well and the protons have a positive charge. And then the negatively charged electrons, they surround the nucleus. Elements are made of atoms that have the same number of protons. So if, you, um, if you've seen this periodic table of the elements before, you'll notice that it goes in order. It starts with hydrogen. Hydrogen has one proton. The next um, element on the chart is helium. Helium has two protons. And so on and so forth throughout the entire chart. The chemical bonds form between groups of atoms because atoms become stable when their valence shell is full. Now, what that means is that very outer shell, if it is full of electrons, then the, um, the atom is, is happier. But if it's not full, let's say, you know, a full shell usually has eight. Well, if it only has seven, it's not a very happy atom. So it's looking to fill that outer shell. So, Covalent bonds form when atoms share valence electrons. So the, um, they're not transferring that electron from one to another, but they're sharing it. Both molecules are holding on to that electron, and that's held by a covalent bond. And these are always between nonmetals. So like hydrogen and oxygen, they're both nonmetals, and they form a covalent bond. Ionic bonding is, um, that's the attractive force between those oppositely charged ions. So ionic bonding is usually between a nonmetal and a metal, and there's an opposite charge on each of these atoms, and so they're attracted to each other, kind of like what you see with a magnet. And so those atoms, they'll gain or lose electrons to a different atom, in order to form that bond. So if you look down here at the bottom, you see this um, sodium chloride. Well, sodium has one extra electron, okay? And so it has an outer shell with one electron in it. Chlorine, however, its outer shell isn't full. And so chlorine's very happy to borrow that electron from sodium, and that bonds them together and forms sodium chloride. There's also something called polarity. So covalently bonded molecules, they have opposite charges at either end of the molecule. So we see this with water. On one side of the water molecule, it might have a positive charge. And on the other side of that molecule, there would be a negative charge. And those charges are weak, but they're there. And so they attract other charges. And this also helps with solubility. Because it attracts that charge, Things are soluble in water. Then there's hydrogen bonds. Um, hydrogen bonds, they, um, they're not as strong as a covalent bond, but they're a very important type of bond to living things. So um, when hydrogen bonds to oxygen, nitrogen, or fluorine atom, it has um, a charge almost nearly as great as the proton's charge. And so that gives it an attractive force. We're going to move right along now and talk about the chemistry of water and solutions. As you can imagine, water is very important to um, life. So some of the properties of water that make it so important to living things is that um, are because of the hydrogen bonding that is in water. So because of the hydrogen bonds, the ice floats. This, um, the hydrogen bonds, they lock the molecules into those crystalline structures that have empty spaces, and that empty space is full of air, and so ice floats. Water also absorbs and then maintains heat. So the bonds in water are constantly breaking and reforming, and this allows water to slowly heat up but then once it does heat up, it maintains that heat. It holds that energy well. 
cohesion is a really important uh, pro property of water. This means that water molecules tend to stick together and that's because of their polarity. So like when we talked about how one side of the water molecule has um, a slight positive charge and the other side has a slight negative charge, well, all of the molecules have that, and so the negative charge of one molecule is attracted to the positive charge of another molecule, and water molecules are really good at sticking together. Adhesion is another extremely important um, property of water, and it's so important because water molecules will stick to other substances, and we see this in capillary actions. So if you look at this little diagram right here, you'll notice that this big straw put into water, well, the water doesn't rise up as much in here. So you could think of this as putting a big tube into a glass of water. The water would rise up some, but not all the way up. This one be more like a McDonald's straw. You know how the McDonald's straws are nice and big and thick? Well the liquid moves up through the straw because the molecules are sticking to the side of the straw and that the differences in pressure, they help with that. Now this one, see how thin this one is? And notice how far this travels up that um, tube? Well, that's because of adhesion and also because the, the tube is thinner, so water will travel up through here. When we talk about plants later on, you'll see that this is an extremely important property of water. All right, let's move on to solutions. Um, a solution is any liquid where there's some ions or molecules and they're evenly distributed throughout the entire substance. Um, so these are dissolved substances, and dissolved substances, they can move more easily within and between cells. And water dissolves ionic and polar substances. So ionic and polar substances, think like salt or sugar. We know that these dissolve easily, and that's because, um, the, because of the ionic bonds in there and the polarity, but nonpolar substances like oil, they don't dissolve in water. All right, so acids and bases, acids form extra hydronium ions. All right, so you wanna remember that hydronium ions make a solution more acidic. Bases form extra hydroxide ions. So the, the bases would make, um, the solution would have a lot of hydroxide ions. So we designate this as OH minus because it's an ion. And this we designate as H plus because it's an ion. And so acids have a lot of properties that you might recognize. Um, they're sour. So acids are sour, think lemon juice. Um, they're corrosive to metals, so they'll break down metals, and um, they change litmus from red to blue. You might have done experiments like that before. Um, and then bases are bitter, so anything that is, um, is base will have a bitter taste, and they're slippery, so think of soaps. Soaps are very slippery. All right, and bases don't change the color of litmus. So if you've done experiments where you're trying to decide if it's an acid or base, um, you would know that the color doesn't change when it's a base. All right, so we're gonna look at the pH scale. pH measures how acidic or basic a solution is. So acidic solutions have a pH below seven. So you're basically looking at the pH from zero to six. And you can see that up here, we start here with zero, that would be hydrochloric acid, that's pretty much the stomach acid. Moving up a little bit farther, you have a lemon, you go up further and a banana, which we don't think of as sour, so we're getting very close to neutral here, which is where water is. Water has a pH of seven, so it's neutral. Basic solutions have a pH above seven, so these are going to be basically in the range from eight to 14. So. You'll see here you get, you have baking soda right here at about eight. You're moving through, you have some soap, um, a strong cleaner like ammonia, and then you get to the really strong stuff like drain cleaner, and that would be the most basic. 
All right. Um, one really interesting thing about pH and its application to biology is that blood has a pH of 7.4, and that's really important to the body. If the pH goes down to 7 or up to 7.8, the person could die within seconds because the body's pH has to ma be maintained at a normal level. Buffers are substances that we'll put into a solution that will help prevent those pH changes. So bicarbonate, it's um, HCO3, that's an important buffer in living things. You might have taken Tums when you have an upset stomach, and that's really what you're, what you're doing there, is you're taking bicarbonate and adding it to your system in order to bring your stomach back into a regular, normal level so that you don't have stomach upset. And that's the last of that.